Hello and welcome back to Subnautica. Now you might immediately notice that the base is a little bit different. Well, a lot different. I'll get into that later because I want to get on to the topic of today's video first. But just know I did some base work off screen because I was really annoyed at this, how the other base was working. And we have a little farm and a bioreactor set up. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same stuff. I just moved it. Let's check this radio message first. See what we have. Oh. Can't send a rescue ship all the way out there, so Aurora, you're just gonna have to meet us halfway. We've uploaded blueprints to the ship's We're computer. Going to sandwich run, you in? Uh, yeah, give me a second. Black box data shows the high security terminal in the captain's quarters is still functional. Becky's the... leaving like in five minutes. All right, well, tell Becky I'll just take the the regular. The regular? Yeah, she'll know what I mean. The code should and be. If she doesn't. Just tell her the regular, dude. Okay. The if code. I say regular, she's like, what's the regular? I have to come all the way back up here. The code should be two six seven nine. There we go. Just a ham and cheese. Okay, would you just say ham and cheese? Ham and cheese. Okay. So anyway, that's how you would get the code to the captain's quarters in the Aurora if you didn't just cheat like I did and just enter the code when you go the first time. Uh, so you would make a second trip then and go and get the Neptune launch platform, which would be this here which you can then use to leave the planet, right? But that's not the topic of today's video just yet. We are going to be trying to get the Cyclops, which is the submarine you use as a bit of a mobile base in Subnautica. Now, to get the Cyclops, you're going to need, first of all, a mobile vehicle platform, or bay, sorry. Uh, pretty simple, don't need to explain that. But the Cyclops does require three separate blueprints to unlock the main blueprint, and that is the engine, the hull, and the bridge. I unlocked the engine blueprint already, and for the sake of uh, comprehensiveness, the way I did that was I found engine fragments in the underwater islands biome, which is just to the west of the mountain island you get sent to in the story. Then the hull and the bridge are a little bit less easy to find, but I do think I know of a location where you can find both of those in one place, and that is the northwestern mushroom forest, or specifically a wreckage in that biome. I'm pretty sure I've gotten them there before. So we'll head out there. Let me get some spare water, because you know how it is. We'll head out there, and we'll see if we can scan the remaining blueprints we need to unlock the Cyclops, and then comes the trouble of getting the components for the Cyclops, but I think I can do it. We have access to all the starting resources in the game, so I see no reason it should be too difficult. Now to get to the Northwestern Mushroom Forest Biome, or whatever it's called, you want to go Northwest. Oh, uh, let me bring a beacon so I can make finding it a little bit easier, hang on. I don't like to have to use an out of game map to know where the biomes are, so I do tend to try and keep beacons at major biomes that I'll want to know uh, more about that I don't necessarily have memorized. Like, I could go to the bulb zone without needing a beacon right now, but uh, some other biomes I'm just less familiar with. That one there would take us to the mountain island, which I'm actually going to hide, because uh, I don't need to know that. <laughs> so let's head out northwest, see if we can find it. There is actually Life Pod 13. That might take us to the biome. I'm not sure. We'll head in that direction, see what we find. Here we are. The Northwestern Mushroom Forest. I will leave a beacon here. Now I do know I could just try and like A. Memorize the locations of biomes and B. Remember which life pods are in which biome but like I'm lazy. Hello stalker. Northwest Mushroom Forest. Now you want to go to specifically the Northwestern one because the Northeastern one doesn't have this specific wreckage. Immediately just on the ground, I'm actually seeing a Cyclops part here, the bridge fragment. So that's a good start, I suppose. <laughs> Let's keep looking for a wreckage though, because that's always going to be your easiest way to get fragments is around wreckages. This is quite the maze to go through. Yeah, we should check out that one life pod as well, actually. There's another piece there. I think this is hull fragment, right? Yeah. Let me just put something on my last slot there. It annoys me if I don't. So yeah, even just coming to this biome and having to scoot around the ocean floor can give you Cyclops parts. And it's a pretty safe biome, all things considered. Especially if you stay low down. Because there is a big biome nearby filled with Reaper Leviathans, and you'll know when you're there, don't worry. Uh, so they might wander into the area above you, but they're not going to go into the trees to get you. 
mushroom trees. Confusing. Let's see what this has. Data pad. Ooh. Okay, so he had a little moment as he was dying horribly. Fun for him, love that. We found a moon pool fragment there, by the way. That's very useful. That lets you dock your sea moth and your prawn suit with a base so that you can make modifications and stuff. So you can find that in this biome as well. So we found the Cyclops hull fragments. Now we just need the bridge. What's this? Another moon pool fragment. There we go, we got that now too. That's another really useful upgrade for me to have. Uh, right, so we need to find the bridge, and I still want to find that one wreckage that's in here, even though I don't need that one thing from it. We need just more hull fragments. Yeah. Oh. It's this place. I hate this place. Let's see if I can get the little voice line. No, it doesn't seem to be giving me the funny voice line. Well, shit, while I'm here, let's be smart and get some... Ugh, ampule. Come on. Where the hell did the ampule come from? Did they spawn in this biome? I actually didn't know that. I thought they were bulb zone only. Anyway, uh, yeah, I want to get some of this blood oil since I'm in this horrible, horrible place filled with horrible, horrible things. Might as well get some blood oil and I might as well get some deep shrooms. And I think I saw some urinate there as well. That's worth grabbing. My inventory's full. One second. Uh, let's drink some water and grab the urinate. Okay. Got a few samples that are useful from this biome. You know, I've never checked. Does the blood kelp actually give you anything if you stab it? No. Right, let's go back into the safe place. Mm, it's not that safe now. There's a crab squid in there. Still, not that dangerous, probably. I mean, one of them isn't going to do much. Yeah, this is the biome we really don't want to go into. It's a lot scarier than even the blood kelp. We want to hunt that bloody wreckage down. Ah, there it is. What are these pink things growing on the side? Is that floors? That's oh, just weird decorative stuff. Alright, let's have a look up here then. Ah, there's a way in. Let's see what fun things we can find in here. Oh, what was that? I see. Light stick fragment. Have I got this? Oh, now I do. This just not go anywhere. It'd be disappointing. That. Oh, it's just water. Hmm. Oh, does this lead somewhere? Here we go. Cyclops bridge fragment. Two out of three so far. Let's see if we can find another entrance and area to this base. Base? This is a chunk of a broken starship. What are you talking about? Base? Ah, this looks like more the kind of place we want to go to. Here we are. And there was a hole there as well. Picture frame. Have I not scanned these? I guess I haven't. Let's laser cut my way through here. Seriously, I ran out of battery. That's mildly annoying. Continue with that. Let's see what we can find here. Another light stick fragment. I don't exactly need that. Ah, what the fuck? Oh, I got zapped. Anyway, Cyclops bridge fragment here. So there's the last one I needed. There's more to this place, though. More data boxes and stuff. Hello. I can't open this door. 
I feel like I should be able to get on the other side. Ah, here we are. Leads somewhere. Also, plant shell. Hey. Data box. Cyclops thermal reactor module converts thermal energy into power. Pretty useful one, considering where you take the Cyclops a lot of the time in this game. Take the abandoned PDA. Aurora scanner room voice log. The way I see it, no one's to blame here. He gave me the wrong coordinate. She didn't give me clear instruction. Okay, I'll rephrase. You've been equally incompetent. Now, we've lost time, but we're closer to the planet. So if the Degasi's out there, the scan should pick it up. Why are we even helping the Mongolians? They're the competition. Enjoy your shore leave on Sanjay Station. Captain. Like having fuel in the tanks? Thank the Mongolians. We run the scans, we show them we didn't find anything, and we say thanks for the free dinner. Clear? Sir, there's something odd on the surface scan here. Turn that recorder off. Okay, so they were trying to find the Degasi. And apparently, the Mongolians are very nice to them. So that's fun. The Mongolians being one of the, I think, three major factions in the Subnautica universe. Don't know why specifically Mongolia, but at least it's original. Now, I'm pretty sure there's another room in here somewhere with another data box that I want, but I'm not sure where the bloody entrance to it is. Also, damn, these trees are strong, huh? Because this is like... A whole wreckage. Let me head back in here and see what I can find. Are you laser cuttable? No. What about you? No. Uh, does this lead anywhere? Oh, nope. Definitely seems like I should be able to get through that door. Let's see, what direction is that? South. Let's see if we can find something over there. I don't know, maybe that's it. Let's see if there's anything down below or in the trees. Also, did I get the stuff with this, Cyclops? I wasn't paying attention. Okay, I did. Ah, yeah, here we go. If you need more of that stuff and you didn't get enough in the actual wreckage, you'll find more of it scattered down here. I'm sure there is supposed to be another data box here, but I'm pretty sure it's also something I already have. But I like showing them so people can see them. I don't know where this one is. If I remember correctly as well, by the way, you can find the power cell charger schematic somewhere in this biome, if you look closely enough. I've already found that elsewhere though, uh, which is a pretty important one for your Cyclops because it runs off of power cells. Alright, well, I got the important thing that I need. Let's head back to the base and start trying to make this. It shouldn't be very difficult. I'm seeing enameled glass, which is pretty simple. There's another wreckage over here that might be worth checking. Uh, there's also plasteel ingots. Go away, sand shark. Which are pretty simple. Lubricant, advanced wiring kits, and lead. So yeah, pretty, pretty easy stuff to get, actually. Let's have a look around at this wreckage really quickly and see if there's anything I need. We got bioreactor, which I've already done. Theme off? Yeah, I've got that, obviously. Uh, let's have a look in here. It's always worth checking because you might find like a data box for a really useful upgrade that only spawns in like two rooms. So. There's battery charger fragments on the ground. I don't need that anymore either, though. Battery charger... Where's this lead? It, it just goes nowhere. Okay. And we can laser cut this. More battery charger. Modification station. Some items. Modification station. More items. So no data boxes. And there's also laser cutter and propulsion cannon so i mean if you can get here you can find a lot of useful stuff but only really for the early game let's head home oh there's another wreckage right here as well bioreactor ah yeah i've been here before there's nothing too useful there for me all right here we are back at base that blood oil does take up a lot of space doesn't it let me put some of this stuff away really quickly these deep shrooms Actually, you know what? I'm going to do something better with the deep shrooms. Uh, give me that battery back. I'll charge it. So, really quickly before we build the Cyclops, I do want to do something with the materials I did happen to find in the Blood Kelp biome. If we come out here and build like an exterior grow bed, let's do it down here because I want to give it enough room to fully grow up. I don't think the thingies will attack it. Farm we alien plants is a proven nope. survival strategy. Craig McGill survived 47 months on a healthy, raw, 
Salad of live tree roaches and stank root. Okay, thanks for the update. So we can grow those blood vines. I don't know if that then grows us more blood oil. Yes, it does. I just checked that. So now we don't have to go back to the blood kelp biome to get my own blood oil, which is a very useful crafting component. And you can do the same with deep shrooms. Now, with deep shrooms, I might want to actually hit them. Yeah, and that gives me seeds, so I actually don't want to plant them. I want to... No, I do want to plant them. I'm all over the place. But I want to hit them to get the seeds, rather than getting the actual product. And that'll just grow me a whole lot of those. Plus a couple of blood kelp vines, which I can use for more blood oil. So I don't have to go all the way back out to that biome to get that thing. Blood oil, by the way, can be used in your bioreactor if you want, which... I don't know if I mentioned this at the start of the video, but this, basically, you take your plants, you put them in here, it makes power, it's grey. Now, on to building the damn Cyclops. Just need some space for this blood oil, it's so big. There we go. So what we need first is the enameled glass. Enameled glass is made of glass and stalker teeth. And glass is made from quartz. Here's one piece of glass that I had. More quartz. Stalker tooth. I think I have more stalker teeth lying around somewhere. I swear I picked up like four or five of them. I'm like one stalker who was just going crazy. Uh, that's fine. We can get more of that quite easily. So I need three more quartz and a bunch of stalker teeth. Which is a good opportunity to try and actually get stalker teeth because I rarely bother to farm them. But I need them immediately so we'll try and do it. So what we need for that is scrap mail. If we just have a little scoot around for five minutes, we should probably find some pile of stalker teeth and a pile of scrap metal already, because there's stalkers all the way around here. Here's some metal. Ah, here's a tooth. Here's two tooths. Or as they would say, two teeth. Uh, stalker's dropping some metal. Let's see if we can farm a couple more from him. So if I drop that, will he go for it immediately? I think he's more interested in my flesh. That might have been an oversight on my part. Let me pick it back up. Is it just dropping it or can you equip this? Hang on, let's see. I feed it to them. Is that how you're supposed to do this? Like I said, I never really bothered with it before. Hello, stalker. Would you like to eat some metal? Okay, that does actually throw it. So if we just... Yeah. Come and collect my metal. Oh wait, maybe I want to give them peepers first. <laughs> I forgot about that mechanic in the game. Give me a fish. Oh, they are going for the metal though now that I'm not there. Which should mean we can find teeth very soon. You hear a horrible crunching sound when they break their teeth. I know I only need three, but this is about sending a message. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. I saw quartz there. Oh, tooth. Okay, if you just drop metal near them... They will eventually do it, you just need to get out of their aggro range. But I do want to see if I can do something with a peeper. Maybe here's the quartz I needed. Anyway, what I was saying just before I noticed my microphone was muted is I don't know what the engine efficiency module does. It just says 300%, but I'm reading the wiki. And basically what it does is make you use less energy per, uh, what would you call it? <laughs> per second of moving, I guess. So what I was saying in the portion there that I was muted in, the Cyclops, 
it's turned off with that. Turned on with it again. You can see your crush depth, your engine. You can activate the camera systems if you need to navigate or see what's going on around you. You can rig it for silent running, which makes you use way more power, but you're a lot quieter, which attracts less big enemies. Uh, and you can change your speed with the different speeds being different volumes. See? And then if we go for really fast, we just start making crazy amounts of noise, which will attract predators. So you're going to want to use that when you're already caught and you're trying to get away. Uh, and you could fire your decoys as well, but I don't have any. We use spacebar, we go up, we get a compass, we get a horn, bring this over. Now, despite the fact that you can't build it in the shallows, you can take it into the shallows. Just be careful you don't smash into stuff. I did also say in the segment where I was muted, I want you guys to come up with a name for this Cyclops and maybe a color scheme as well. You can customize the base color, the stripes, and the name color as well. So name and what color the Cyclops is going to be. I'll pick it based off of either who, what gets the most likes or if I find one that's just really funny, I'll go with that. You get floodlights. Don't know if that affects your visibility or your energy. You can turn off the inside lights. There's fire extinguishers everywhere because you use those basically to uh, put out fires. When you get attacked, you have to repair damage. Uh, we can customize the sea moth from here. Or not customize, but like check in and be like oh, wow upgrades this charges it by the way so it'll draw power from your cyclops into the vehicle you bring here making it a mobile base that operates as like a power source for your smaller vehicles as well if we come over here you'll see the upgrade fabricator this is where you make all the upgrades i can't afford any of them right now and this is where you'll see your power cells if you want to place those in and replace them and stuff and you'll find your own upgrade slots here. I've got the engine efficiency module, which will make me use less energy as I go. If we head down here, we can see the Seamoth. And we can see some built-in storage for you. You get five lockers worth, but you can fill this thing with as much as you want. Basically, you can fill the Cyclops with anything you want, as long as it's smaller than a Cyclops. But you have to remember, if you fill this thing with everything you own and so much like high-tech gear and loads and loads of fabricators and just all the best stuff a reaper leviathan can come along and beat the shit out of your cyclops and then you lose it all permanently so you have to be a little bit more careful with what you put in your cyclops because your your base is pretty much safe i don't even know if enemies can attack that i've never seen them attack it uh, they certainly don't do much if they do but your Cyclops, you have to worry about that a lot more. So we got our mobile base. And the reason I wanted a mobile base was so I could build an actual permanent base easier. Which I don't think is why you're supposed to do that. But it's why I did it, goddammit. Now then, another piece of equipment we got today, which I would like to build if we have time, is the moon pool. That is basically like the Cyclops, where you can put the Seamoth or the prawn suit inside it, you can put your Seamoth or prawn suit inside your base and charge it from there without having to swap out your power cells. And you can customize your Seamoth and your prawn suit from there as well. Also, I have picture frames. So let's build a moon pool. I think maybe going down one level and building it like out there would work. I didn't like the sound that just made. Let's go outside and see. <laughs> It's intersecting with the Cyclops, despite the fact it doesn't exist. Are you okay, Cyclops? Did I damage you? Let's have a look inside. Yeah, no, it was just physics junk. It didn't actually take any damage. That's fine. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think it kind of pushed it out of the way for me anyway, so I don't have to worry too much. Let's do that. Just keep it out of the way. So we need titanium ingots, lubricant, and lead. So we just have to go find some scrap metal and some lubricant, which is perfectly easy to do. Hello. Hey, mate. Uh, let's see. We needed five scrap metals worth there's five and then i just need a quick creep fine cluster i think i still have some lead back at my base so i shouldn't need to worry about that too much well i'm extremely annoyed i actually do need to go find some lead typical i always have too much of it until i don't that's fine let's go into the uh other biome here the kelp forest and hunt down some shale and i'll get enough pretty quickly I can also find it in the grassy plateaus over here, I think. There's one. There's another lead. Does this lead down into the jelly shroom, or is it just the same color? I think it's just the same color. That's interesting. Let's go back and build the moon pool. Here we go. The moon pool is now built, so we can actually use it to get inside from here. Now, what we want as well, if I can get one, 
is a vehicle upgrade thingy which goes like in the wall there so we'll need some titanium copper wire and the other thing yeah computer chip oh that ladder was very inconveniently placed let's move this use that to get back upstairs after weeks without human contact it is normal to experience psychological discomfort research indicates symptoms may be partly alleviated by adopting a pet or anthropomorphizing an inanimate object mm -hmm. why do you think we're naming the cyclops game i know what i'm doing Ugh, i'm out of like everything i need to go get some more copper some titanium uh whatever you need for computer chips which i refuse to put into my long-term memory for some reason. Oh yeah, some more copper, some table coral. Grab two of these. And let's go hunt down some limestone. There's one copper. I think I need four. I only need one more copper, actually. Some titanium. More titanium. Another copper. Just need a single piece of titanium now. Ah, oh, here we can scan a sea glide. So I already know it, I'll get some titanium for it. Alright, so we still have a little bit of extra time in this video compared to what I thought I would have. So maybe we should try and get a prawn suit as well. Where's that? What do I need for it? I would really like to get the drill arm if I'm gonna use it because that is the main appeal. And then I would need a grappling arm as well. But uh, the prawn suit... The grappling arm and I will find a drill arm. Requires a decent amount of stuff. We need aerogel, plasteel ingots, diamonds, lead, enameled glass, benzene, advanced wiring kits and some other materials. This isn't too hard at all though. The first thing we need to do is get some aerogel. That's the first thing and it's actually pretty easy to get. If we go to the what is it what is it the mushroom forest i'm fairly certain you can actually find gel sacks there if we can i'm even more sure we can find them in the blood kilt biome so if we head over there we should be able to get the stuff we need to make aerogel ah here we are let me just try and locate that one reaper i'm just going to trust that it's there oh, fuck's sake warper of course there's a fucking warper why wouldn't there be get me this drill Get away from me, you son of a bitch. Alright, we got the drill arm at least. Let's uh, actually mark that out. Okay, that takes basically nothing to make. I think the gel thingies only spawn either deep down or in caves. So I think what we're looking for in this biome is the cave. Which I believe would be around here somewhere, right? We just have to find the big mushroom, which is over here. There's a hole. That'll be a good entryway, I guess. Let's see what we can find inside. This would be a good place to bring a pathfinder tool. Alright, that was just a small cave. Ah, here we go. Gel sacks. Didn't actually have to go inside the cave either, that's nice. They're around the base of the mushroom. Right, well, we got a few gel sacks that I can probably start with. Let's head back. Since I know I'm going to need a shitload of lithium, I will grab some while I'm here. So, we can do the same thing here, by the way, with gel sacks. Oh, what was that? <laughs> I might need to pick a few of these mushrooms. There we go. So, we've got gel sacks now for my aerogel. So, aerogel. What do I need to make that? That and rubies. Yeah, that's what it is. So I need two rubies. Which I have been collecting many of those, so I should be fine. Make two of that. Okay. So now I just need a bit more titanium, some benzene, and a bunch of diamonds. Benzene, of course, is made from blood oil, so just gather up some of that. Oh, I've got diamonds. Hello. I didn't know about that. There's a benzene. Uh, let me grab those diamonds I was mentioning. There we go. Got another one there as well. I'll need some lead then. And I'll need one extra diamond actually. Unless I've got another one lying around in a random place. Doesn't seem like it. Uh, right, let's go get some lead first then. I'll head over to like the 
grassy plateaus and find some shale for that. Other than that, I'm going to need a wiring kit. Or an advanced wiring kit, actually. Which is going to involve more copper and silver. So, yeah. I'll gather these materials and get back to you. For that, we should have everything except some table coral, which I can obviously get. And we can make the prawn suit, the grappling arm, and the drill arm. Okay, let's build the prawn suit. It is normal when first piloting a prawn suit to feel a sense of limitless power. Prawn operators receive weeks of training to counteract this phenomenon. You will have to make do with self-discipline. Okay. And here it is. Welcome aboard, Captain. We've got two claws. And we can jump. Now, it can't really do much for starting out like this. Except it can go to 900 meters, you know, without any difficulty. That is something of note, I suppose. Uh, but you're probably going to have to use your Cyclops to get around. Does this have its own storage? Oh, it does. Cool. So that's where those things you mine and up go. Let's move this over to the moon pool, though. Here we go. So this thing has four modules there as well, uh, which are going to be taken up by your arm slots, I think. Uh, the main one I need is the drill arm. And then I would like to get the grappling arm as well, but that can wait a little, little second here. So we put that in there. Okay, does that not take up one of the upgrade slots? Cool. So you can actually still use four upgrade slots whilst having a drill arm and another arm. So that's nice. Let me go and make the other arm now that I have some inventory space and I can actually make the stuff for it. I am actually standing on the back of a reef back that is currently pushing its own back out of the water. So we have a, a makeshift island here. I came here for some copper ore. There we go. There's such a good source of it. And silver. Right, let's uh, swim back. Also, I will need a name and a colour scheme for the prawn suit, so be sure to leave that in the comments as well. With that, we can now make the other arm for the prawn suit, which I find to also be important. Oh, I can make a storage module as well, but let's go for this. There we go. So now, we jump in this. We've got the grappling hook. These are the wrong way around. Hang on, let's switch these. Access the upgrades, come on. That is not the order. I would like to have those on. There, so now the drill is this side. And the grappling hook is not. And the grappling hook can be used for getting up caves, because this obviously doesn't have full proper swimming capabilities. It just has, like, jets. You can get a decent distance, but it's obviously going to eat your power. Also, this is just really fun. So you can get around very quickly with the grappling arm compared to uh, not. But really, if you want to get around in this sense, what you want to do is put it in your Cyclops. And that sounds like a good idea to me. Let's go give this a quick test run. We're going to take it to the mushroom forest, I think. We're going to deploy it and see if I can get a load of copper, because that is where the big copper nodes spawn. I'll grab some food and water before I leave, and then we'll go and do a little run. Alright, here we are. In the mushroom forest. Now, obviously, the Cyclops is about as ill-suited to this area as can be. So we're not going to be able to take it deep in or low down. We have to choose either low down or deep. So I'm going to choose to leave it here. So that I can actually get the prawn suit back in. Alright, I'm immediately seeing some copper though. That's a good start. If we come over to this. Let me just check the uh, storage here. We have a few random things in it. I'll just throw them away so that I can maximise my hole here. So this is copper ore. No, that's the wrong one. There we go. We knocked a bit off. Let's 
keep drilling this, and it sort of automatically adds it to your inventory. There we go. Oh, there's still some more. So that got me. Yep. Just half an inventory's worth of copper very easily. Compared to having to hunt down loads of limestone deposits, for example. That's quite nice. Let me grab all that. Put in my inventory. See if we can find a couple more of those. Now up here, we've got a copper and a lithium. Just chilling. So let me dig this up too. There we go. Another big chunk of copper ore. Let's grab that lithium while I'm at it. You can see how this would be very quickly much faster than searching for like individual nodes. There we go. Big inventory's worth of lithium. Let's see if we can find one more node before we head back to the Cyclops. Oh, there was some lithium right next to the Cyclops cell there. Let's get that. <laughs> there we go. So, oh, there was copper right next to it as well. I'm so terrible. Unless it maybe spawned a new one. That is possible, but I doubt that. Let's jump up in here. And just dump all this copper in these chests. And the same with the lithium. Can we reach the storage from down here? That would be helpful if we could, but I don't think we can. I'll probably put my own storage in this area then, instead. But we'll do that later, let's get all this. Lithium and copper are two of the more annoying early game resources that you always have to find more of, so I'm happy to have such a good supply of them now. It'll last me a little while. Before I forget where it is, let's take the prawn suit back out and get that one copper node I saw. Hiding in plain sight. There we go. See if there's any more immediately round here that I missed then. This might be the prime area for it is like on the edge of the biome. I didn't see much of it in the middle, which would make sense because there's trees in the way. So maybe they block the spawns of the nodes. I saw a lot of salt, but I really don't need salt. Oh hey, there's one of these time capsule things. These are left here by other players when they finish their game, I think. Haven Fawn's emergency kit. Just keep swimming deeper, but never forget about your oxygen. And it came with a bunch of large filtered water, med kits, and food. Thank you, Avon Fawns. Whoever that is. Presumably just some player. And you can leave one of those before you leave the planet, basically, with whatever you want to put in it. I'm not sure what the limitations as to what you can put in it actually are, but I assume there's at least a storage limit. You can't just put everything a player would need in the game in it. I remember in one, I just got shitloads of silver. That was fun. There's a reaper nearby. Where is he hiding? Oh, there's a big crystal node. Let me pick up this copper really quickly. Where is that reaper? Must be on the other side of this, like, hill. If we come in here, we can get a load of quartz as well. Just have to keep my eyes open. There we go. Nice big load of quartz there. Wasn't really what I was looking for, but I'll take it. Oh, hello. Is this titanium? Because I do need titanium. Oh, it's silver. I'll take it. The reaper's out there being spooky. Alright, so we got silver there. Let's pick up all this shit in here. Wow, that's really fast. Right, let's get that one node of titanium I see taunting me over here. Yeah, this biome is definitely better for it, but you do have to contend with the reapers and apparently sand sharks who are kind of struggling. There you go, you figured it out. Come on, fight me then. Let's fight. See how this goes for you. It's the diamond tip drill. What do you think is going to happen? I don't even know if you can damage me. I'd advise just swimming away. I just want some metal, goddammit. Yeah, we can barely fit anything else in here. We could get a little bit more titanium, I suppose. Let's grab some, I guess. I'll need to keep an eye out for when it stops picking it up, though. I swear to god, Sandshark, if you hit me. That sword has no room. Let's leave. Certainly have a lot more than I was expecting to come back with in terms of the actual uh, 
different items. What the fuck? Come on, Prawn. Ugh. It's having a moment. Give it a second. I'm sure you can see how all of these materials in this Prawn suit and Cyclops combo can be very good for when you want to build an actual permanent base. Which is why we were doing this. Because now I have five chests full of base building components, basically. I'll need a lot more titanium, but we can worry about that later. This has been very successful. I'm not sure what we'll do in the next video, but I think I'm going to collect more materials between episodes and upgrade the Cyclops to have more storage. Because I want to minimize the amount of um, time spent in videos gathering materials. So that when I wake up to record, I can go and do something a bit more interesting. You know, make new things, craft new components, do the story without having to show you guys me drilling every bit of titanium and stuff. Because you get it. I've got a prawn suit. I can get loads of it. So, give me some names for the various things. Remember that my Patreons and members do get these videos early. Let me know if you're still enjoying the series, and in the meantime... Special thank you to my members and patrons. If you want to become one of those, there are links in the description to do so. If you enjoyed this video, why not check out another one? I would recommend the one on the top right. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.